Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Justin Wolf from Wolf Customs. And I'm Larry Roberts. Both Justin and myself pride ourselves in bringing only the best outdoor videos. Where we show only the reality of the situation, none of the stage drama. So if you want to see what the popular TV shows didn't show, then stay with us and we'll show you the skills and knowledge needed. We'll show our success and our failures. In many cases, these are things that we've never done ourselves and we're going to be learning right alongside you. But what we won't show is the made up drama only put in for ratings. So let's imagine for a moment that behind me is a cave or something along them lines. And I say imagine because I ain't got I ain't got no caves. But if I had to navigate that cave and I didn't have a flashlight or anything like that, how would I do that? Well, oftentimes in the popular reality shows, we see people making torches and everything else. Well, I've seen a lot where they make them out of natural materials and you know what, it just seems like they burn for a really long time. TV has a way of making things do what it wants, I guess. And I've always questioned whether or not how long a natural torch would burn. Resource, you know, it depends on the resources in your era, of course. So Larry and I have talked about this and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to make torches only using natural materials and we're gonna see how long we can get them to burn this is something I've never done I've made torches before you know um, but never out of all natural materials so this is definitely taught you know taking some thinking of on my part with how I'm going to do this um, because you know I don't got fat wood and I don't got birch bark and all that good stuff but, um, I don't know. I've got cedar. You know, and cedars do have oils in them. And so I think I'm going to try to do something with the cedar. So, let's see what we can do.
All right, so obviously I'm going to need a cordage. And I could just use some that I have on me, but like I said, I want to make sure that this is an all-natural torch. Um, normally I'd be going for some willow bark, but in the area that I am at, there is no willow. So I've just cut down a sapling of a sycamore, and I'm going to see, or excuse me, not a sycamore, but an elm. I'm going to see if I can skin it out a little bit and see if I can get some useful cordage. It does not have to be anything fancy. Okay, I mean, I don't need to do a reverse twist or anything like that type cordage for what I'm going to do right now. Um, that would be on other projects. I don't even know if this particular tree makes a good cordage, but you know what? No better time than right now to find out, right? So this is what I got. I'll try to strip this out. See what we can do. Now, in case you're wondering what's all over my arm, is uh, if you launch a uh, couple videos back, you'll see I did a test with poison ivy and Virginia creeper. As a preventative, the Virginia creeper did quite well, but as a treatment, it didn't work very good at all. So, I'm miserable, but no big deal. Good education. Before I get carried away, I'm just going to kind of see if this is going to... Yeah, it looks like it's going to peel off there pretty good. So I think it, it should be just fine for what it is that I'm doing. see there's only one way to find out and that's just to do it okay I've changed tactics it doesn't want to peel off very good so I am just going to split this and whole entire limb down and then I should be able to take this off a little bit better the trick is going to be to be able to split this all the way down like that. Let's see if it... No. It's not working very good, guys, it really ain't. I might have to try some smaller limbs of the cedar and see if they're good and flexible because I don't, there's not a whole lot in this area in the way of cordage. And this is not going to cut it at all. Not at all. You know, I could uh, very easily drive, you know, away from this particular area that I'm in, go down to my river, and I would be surrounded by willow, and cordage wouldn't be an issue, and I could take all this stuff with me, put it all together in one video, and just kind of make it look like I was in the same area. The fact of the matter is, I'm not in that area. So this is forcing me to use different resources, you know, and experiment a little bit, so that's good. So what I've got now is I've got just a little bit of um, black walnut. And is what I've done is I've done the same thing. So now you can see that 
that is peeling off nice. Look at that. See, it's just coming right off. Just like that. Now, is it going to make good cordage? I have no idea. Not the best. It might do. I don't know. Or it might not. I might have to do without cordage and just wing it. I don't know. The reason I'm going to use this cordage is because I'm going to split this. I'm going to fork this down. Okay? I'm going to fork it just like that. Well, I don't want my splits to run away from me. So I was going to tie this around it to keep it from splitting any farther than this point. You know what I mean? So that way, when I press my toggles down into it, it doesn't want to continuously split out. Now, I don't necessarily need this for what I'm doing, but, you know, I'm having fun trying it. So, the other thing I could do is I guess I've got that cedar right there and it can pull away. It might work better. I don't know. Let me just strip this off. I don't know why I didn't think about this right at the very beginning. It might be better, guys. Definitely have more cordage as well, if it works good. funny you don't think about things. I didn't really think about the cedar being a very good option because it's got so many knots in it. But this section here is not got a lot of knots. About the same tensile strength but I got a lot more of it so I'm going to use this for sure. Alright, I'm kind of ticked at myself right now because I've been doing this video and I forgot to hit record. So now i got to backtrack a little bit and tell you guys exactly what I've done. I'm going to head, I'm going to go ahead and remove this cordage right here and demonstrate what I did. Okay, so after I got all my cordage, as you can see, I just split this two different ways once and once and I went down about oh 16 inches or so maybe a little less maybe a foot I don't know but when I was putting my toggles in here I realized I want them a little thinner so that's what I've done is I've shaved these down just a little bit thinner and this is the reason why I needed that cordage is because when I go putting these toggles in here like this you can see that that is creating a wedge and that's just going to want to continue to split so I'm going to put that cordage right here and that's going to just that's going to allow it to come down to about here in this section here without splitting this out anymore so that's why I didn't have to be fancy on my cordage because it's not really serving any purpose other than keeping that uh, split from running on me so, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here and I'm just going to lash this a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to create that loop right there and that, that little tag in like that. And then I'm just going to wrap this around it. Doesn't have to be super, oops, doesn't have to be super tight.
just enough. Okay, so then once I've went around this as much as I can, I'm just going to put this right through that loop. I'm going to come down here to my tag and I'm going to pull down on that. And that will cinch that in place. Like that. Now that should help prevent that from splitting out a little bit more. Put a little bit more on there. Now why I'm doing this guys, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's been watching this series. Uh, both Larry and myself have really appreciated all the positive feedback that we have gotten. Um, you know, everybody's been great. I love the fact that I can do something like this and I guarantee I'm going to have somebody that's going to be able to give me a little bit of advice. Um, you know, if I ever have to do this for real. Now, the one thing I will say is sometimes I think people read into this a little bit too much. You know, I've gotten messages like, well, why didn't you do it like this, or why didn't you do it like that, um, you know, on certain aspects. And is what I want to remind everybody this is, these, this series isn't necessarily what I would do in that situation. It's basically the things that Larry and I have seen in the uh, in the reality TV shows, and we're testing them, and then of course we do it like our own spin and everything else, you know. So, but again, I just want to say thank you. You guys have been great, and uh, I've learned a lot from you guys with this series. And you know, Larry, you've done a great job too, man. I've learned a lot from watching how you're approaching these things as well that cordage down just a little bit. We're going to split this out just a little bit more. tell you this, the series has been a lot of fun because it is forcing us to do things that we normally would not do, which is really great. We're definitely learning. That's what it's all about. Right, let's slide that back up into place. Let's get our wedge and put it in there. Still not happy. I still want that to go down a little bit deeper. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. And that's what I got. 
Now, I'm not going to trim these off. I may want to use these for something later on down the line that I just don't foresee doing now. So I'm going to leave that for now, and I might just leave a period. I don't know. So my next plan is I'm going to find some dead cedar, and I'm going to make some some shavings. Okay, they're not necessarily going to be fine shavings. They're just going to be good shavings, and I'm just going to pack them really really deep into this thing. Try that. mainly rotted. Okay, this is what I was after here. Um, you know, I could use some other wood as well, something that doesn't have a lot of knots and everything else in it. But I think that the oils in this cedar might help me. I don't know. So now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up and then get some uh, smaller shavings and everything else of it. Wish I'd have brought my axe. I don't really like batoning. Especially something like this that has all this all these knots in it, but it is what it is. I think I might take some time and make some wedges. I have no doubt that this skookum can do this, but I, like I said, I am just not a fan of batoning, plain and simple. something with this right here. may not have any other choice. I might have to find some better wood. This wood is not good at all. It's really rotten. We'll see. More like. 
and no knives were harmed in the doing of that. This one here is one of my better candidates to making some shavings with, so I'm going to use this one here. Basically, I'm just going to make a lot of them that's about like that. And not only am I making shavings, but I'm also keeping these chunks like this, okay? So I'm going to treat this torch just like a fire. Tender. Kindling fuel. Will it work? I don't know. Okay, let's start putting this thing together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of that, that fluff that I got from my cedar. I'm going to pack it in the very bottom. not really wanting to go down there, you know, so I'm just going to take the wedge that I was using and I'm just going to force it. I don't like that. It doesn't look like it's going to really allow a lot of oxygen in there, to be honest with you. Let's see if I can pull some of that back out. I'm going to put it in there more loosely and then pack it in at the very end a little bit. Something about that right, right there just did not sit well with me. You know, and I don't think I'm going to put all of my fluff right here. I think now I'm going to start putting some of the shavings in here as well. And then a little bit more fluff.
I just think, as, you know, my first impression is I think that all this stuff down here, the outside is going to catch and the inside just is not going to get enough oxygen. That's my first impression. So right, I mean really my, my hope is that this is going to get enough flame and enough heat to get my larger chunks on top going. So that maybe it will burn down in it. I don't know. I honestly, the way this is looking right now, though, I kind of suspect this is going to be. A fail, to be honest with you. Just don't. It's going against the principles of fire. But I could be wrong. So we're going to keep going with the original idea. I mean, I could turn this video off right now and adjust because of everything that I've done right now has taught me something. But that's not what I'm going to do. That's not the reality of it. So we're going to keep going. Give everybody the real footage as it happens. Now if it was birch or something like that, I would suspect that the oils would give me a little bit more leeway when it comes to this, but I could be wrong there too. I just, you know, I don't get a chance to really play with birch that much, so. Okay, so now I'm just going to start putting in some of my bigger chunks. So I'm going to take some of these green vowels and put in there as well because I mean, I may not be going into a cave. This may be for a um, signal fire or something like that, you know. I may have my base camp set up. I might have a signaling device, you know, away from me. I may want to just light this fast and go and light my signal fire. So it might not necessarily be a bad idea to put a little bit of green in here as well. Make a little smoke. Okay, so here is our torch. Next thing to do is to light our torch. I'm not going to light it with a lighter or anything like that. I'm actually going to pretend that I have a base camp or I have, you know, a fire. So I'm just going to make start a little fire real quick, ignite it from that, and then we'll see how long this thing burns. All right, moment of truth. Probably should have left it in that fire just a little bit longer. Heat up that inside. Because just as I suspected, the heat's not wanting to really penetrate.
But what I'm doing is not necessarily cheating. I'm just making sure that my torch is going before I leave camp. Or run into a cave. But it's just not a very, it's not a good torch, plain and simple. Maybe I should have used, a, you know, I, I chose to use a green wood here, which now I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe that's just sucking the heat out of the torch itself. Maybe I should have used a, a dead wood. You know, and I chose to use a green wood because I didn't want it to burn, you know, which... thinking about it now, maybe I should have went the other direction. Because even my dead stuff is not wanting to, to stay, you know, it's not wanting to flame. And I think that's exactly what it is. I think that this dead, or this dry, or god dang it, this uh, wet wood here is just sucking the heat right out of it, is what I think is happening. So do I classify this torch as a fail? Yeah, I do. I personally classify this torch as a fail. Do I classify this whole thing as a fail? Not at all, because I've just learned a lot by doing this, you know. Doesn't matter how many fires you start in your life. If you've never tried something for yourself, you don't know if it's going to work until you try it. So this has forced me to get out and try this. And was the, the torture was a fail? Yes, but at least it taught me something. I didn't think it was going to be this big of a failure, but now could have also, I also could have uh, researched this, you know. I could have went online and looked up every damn video out there so that I make myself look better than what I am, you know. Make myself look good. Oh yeah, I did on my first try, no problem. Look at that, done. But that's not that's not what Larry and I are trying to accomplish here. We don't research this stuff ahead of time. We don't talk to each other to try to figure out how the other one's going to do it. We don't do any of that stuff. We just go out and do it. If it fails, it fails. And that, my friends, is a fail. I should have opened this up more. See what I mean? That's the inside. It's not even burnt. Just wasn't getting enough oxygen, plain and simple. Because there's still fluff inside here that's not burnt. And as I was packing it in there, I knew there just was not going to be enough oxygen flow in there. But I didn't want to start over. I wanted to take it to the very end because that's what's fair to you guys. I should have made sure that this, I mean, see it's starting to bubble out here, so I should have made sure that this was uh, all dead wood and not live, especially in early summer when the sap is really going strong still, because it's just it just sucked the heat out. Would it have been a, enough to hit it and run over for a signal fire? Yeah, I believe it would have been. But I know I damn sure wouldn't want to go into a deep, dark cave with something like this, you know? So anyway, is what it is. A fail is a fail. We still learned. Hope this um, give you guys a little bit of insight on what you might want to try and I encourage you go out and try this do it for yourself because if you don't this could happen when you need it 
But anyway, this has been another episode of Clothed Confident. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Have a good one.